What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and this week there were some really cool blaster announcements that I'm super excited to talk about. But first, a little bit of bad news. Fusion 360 is an incredibly popular CAD software that a lot of people in the hobby use to create things for the hobby. I mean, just search Nerf on Thingiverse, there's a ton of things that come up, and a lot of them were created using Fusion 360 because they had a really, really robust free version of the software. And now there are changes coming to the free personal use license. Uh, the most notable one, and I think the biggest hit to our hobby, is that there will be fewer export options. And the biggest one there is STEP. STEP files will no longer be able to be exported from Fusion 360. And this hurts because those are a lot easier to edit than STLs or OBJs. And it's just, it'll be a little bit more difficult for people to piggyback off of each other's designs, to collaborate uh, on just the, the crazy projects that we end up making. And that is a huge, a huge shame and the biggest change, in, in my opinion, to this license. Uh, another huge change is that you can only have 10 active documents at a time. Uh, you can archive things that you aren't using, and you can change the active and archive status at any time. It is literally just to be annoying to prevent commercial misuse, which it's a free license. You don't, <laughs> they don't want people uh, using that to create money. They want you to buy the program to do that. But uh, it just the Putting a step in the way specifically to be annoying is really annoying. <laughs> uh, the definition of active document is really strange. And if you use Fusion 360, you should just go look that up. And this will be really important for you to look at anyway. Um, the blog post is in the description if you want to read all of the uh, documentation for that. Um, the other thing that affects some of you, or probably not most of you, is that there is no more simulation um, features so uh, no, no kind of simulation, uh, extensions will no longer be supported, and they're limiting the manufacturing features. But anyone I think in our hobby who's doing manufacturing is probably using uh, not a free version of Fusion 360. Um, it is important to note that the trial version, the education version, the startup version, and the paid subscriptions are not changing at all. It's only the free personal use license that is having these changes, and they're going into effect on October first. So anything you have in Fusion 360, if you have the free personal license, go ahead and export those steps now before you lose the ability to do that. Uh, and hopefully we can find a uh, better solution in the future to uh, create things for free and share them with each other. Because I love how free to share, how free people are to share the things that they make. And in better news, the Adventure Force Aeon Pro has been showing up in a couple more places this week. The official release for the blaster was supposed to be October 1st, but it was showing up in Canada since September 1st, which is just crazy. And it's still being spotted all around the Great North, and now it's showing up in the U.S. Midwest. There have been reports of blaster sightings in Illinois in Iowa, in Michigan, and in Minnesota. So if you're in the Midwest, check your Walmart uh, if you're interested in the Aeon Pro. It's a pretty cool blaster and I am super excited for mine as we slowly creep towards October 1st. This year is taking so long. There is another version of the X-Shot Orbit in France only and it is a bizarre collaboration with the National Police Force. <laughs> this blaster is themed for the Gendarmerie Nationale, which is a really strange <laughs> collaboration. Uh, it does look kind of cool with the GIGN logo on it, and what's... It, we'll go with interesting. What's interesting is that it's actually being sold on the GIGN website, uh, along with other uh, toys and merch and everything. I just thought this was really strange and that people would like to see it. Worker announced some new long shot parts that should make your priming experience a little bit 
smoother. They announced a metal bolt sled for the long shot that has two rollers on the side and also a metal catch that has a roller on the bottom. As for the bolt sled, the stock bolt sled also has these rollers. I'm I'm not personally convinced that they do anything. I'm very interested to see how this actually feels uh, with a metal sled and with other metal components. So it'll be interesting to see. But as far as the catch goes with the roller on the bottom, I think that will improve the feel of priming a, a like a metal internal long shot just so significantly. Hopefully it still actually fires fine, but I know I don't like using metal triggers personally because I don't like the actual feel of it against the catch. I think this roller will help a lot with with how just that feels in your hand. I like when blasters just feel good to use, right? Hopefully these are parts that will make it a little bit better and those should be available pretty soon. This week was Toy Fair Everywhere, which I guess is like an online version of Toy Fair. And there were some huge announcements from DDART, of, of all things. Uh, if you guys remember, this was the DDART Tempest. It was a really, really cool blaster. Um, fully automatic flywheel blaster. It darts go around in a ring, and it just fires out as the ring rotates around the handle. And you just hold it with one hand and just fire, and it's awesome. It's a really, really, really cool form factor. And they expanded upon it a ton with a huge slew of new blasters around this form factor. Uh, so we'll start out with the most boring, Tempest V2. It's, it's this with slight improvements. Uh, it still shoots 28 darts, takes four AAA batteries, and there should be plenty of lipo space in the handle. I, I'm, I'm just janky and didn't bother trying to make it fit. But the most important change is that it now takes standard size elite darts instead of their strangely shorter dart. And this is true for all of the blasters that take darts. Standard size darts, awesome change, Good job. Uh, I am hoping it has a slightly more powerful gear motor, a little bit more torque to turn it, but uh, it may not be a problem with more room and no more rubbing with the uh, standard size darts. After that, they get a little bit cooler with the Tempest Pro. Same blaster, but faster rate of fire. I assume they just switch out the gearbox. Uh, the Tempest Pro is going to get four darts a second, which is significantly better than the stock Tempest, but maybe not quite as good as uh, my upgraded gearbox uh, regular Tempest, but we'll see. I'm very excited for that one too. And then it just keeps going, it keeps going. There's another Tempest, the Tempest Cyclone. Uh, a big problem with this one was that after you fire everything, it's really hard and takes a long time to reload the whole thing. The Cyclone has a swappable drum. All the other drums are built in. So 27 darts in each drum, it's, it just gives you double the shots. It's awesome. And then there is more. The Tempest Twin Tornado, 54 darts in two rows, like stacked on top of each other. You can choose whether you want to uh, double fire and fire the whole stack at one time. There's really tall flywheels, so it can so it can fire two flywheels or two darts at the same time, or single fire. Not it, it's still fully auto, but one row and then the other row, and you get to choose that yourself, uh, which is pretty cool that you can choose that and it's still full auto. Awesome. And then, yeah, we're still going. There's the Tempest Blizzard, which we hadn't seen before. This shoots 80 darts, which is just insane. Something a little bit larger than this, like handheld, one hand blaster, 80 darts. This giant thing has to go inside of a blaster and only holds 50. Something more like maybe, you know, like maybe double this size, maybe. 80 darts, crazy, one-handed. It's 20 magazines around a ring, four darts, it, four darts in each magazine. This thing is just <laughs> ridiculous. And again, it's still full auto, still four AAA darts. It, it, <laughs> they just keep innovating on this, this idea, and it's so, so cool. And then, because we're still talking about them, is the Hailstorm. This one's not a dart blaster, it's a ball blaster. 77 rounds. 
handheld, one hand, 77 rounds. You can take a Percy's and have this big bulky thing that shoots 50 rounds or a hailstorm, which is gonna be way, way smaller, 77 rounds, just insane. What's weird about this one is it takes 12 AA batteries. And from the photos, I have no idea where those are going to be. So I think this is going to be heavy, but it's, I, I am curious about this one because the whole, the battery thing, 12 AA's is so strange. And then if you have one of these blasters, they have an AR add-on unit. So you attach it to your blaster and then you can play some augmented reality games. It's compatible with the Tempest, the Tempest Pro, and the Cyclone. It's going to come with two different uh, augmented reality games. I don't know what the other one is, but the demo that they showed, uh, you showed some creepy spiders. So maybe don't play that if you're arachnophobic, but it's an interesting concept. Very, very neat. And then they just keep going. The Vortex, this is a water gun with a built-in compressor, which is pretty freaking cool. So one-handed operation, compressor, 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 buzz, 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 and then just fire. And it can shoot, they say, up to 12 meters, and that's eight AA batteries, no pumping. It, it's just cool. I don't know how they're innovating so much on this one type of platform. Amazing. Just amazing. That this is, this is the D-Dart episode. <laughs> Very much looking forward to all of those. And now it's time for the mod of the week. And this week it's from Norman Chi with this double jolt. Now, if you ask me, the downfall of the jolt is that it only fires one dart. It's super compact, super small, but again, only one dart, but not anymore. He made his jolt have a breech load inline clip, so you can load two half lengths and then fire it twice. Two times the jolt in the same size. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty clever mod. Simple, clean, elegant. I love it. Thanks so much for sharing it. And that is all the news that I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, the links to everything that I talked about are down in the description, so you can go check them out for yourself. While you're down there, there's the like button, the subscribe button, the bell, there's claps now for some reason. Oh, and I'll see you right back here next week, 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday mornings, uh, Phone Blast channel. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited for the D-Dart stuff. Which D-Dart blaster are you guys most excited for? Because there's so many and they're all cool. I want to see what you say. Let me know. Bye.